In this module, we're going to look at the concept of technology readiness level. And at the bottom of the first slide, you can see a web link that we've made. So any of the uh, links I mention in the presentation, you'll find them on this particular web page. So first of all, I want to look at just a quick overview of technology readiness level to see what it is. Then I want to talk about technology readiness level in Horizon 2020 and how technology readiness level can be used when you're selecting partners for the project. And finally then, um, in the impact section of your proposal, uh, you'll see me repeating uh, the use of TRL. So I'll just introduce the concept of TRL and impact here. Now, the organization called IARTO has written an excellent report on technology readiness level. Uh, IACTO is an organization representing over 350 of the top research and technology organizations in Europe. And you can see their website on this web page. Now, the concept of technology readiness level originated in the 1977. Uh, the aerospace industry introduced it as a way of expressing the level at which a technology uh, was evolving. So there are nine levels to which, which I'm going to explain in the following slides. In the 80s, it was then adopted by the aeronautics industry. And then other industries like the electronics and pharmaceutical industry started to adapt it for their own needs. And today, most industries use it. So the concept of TRL is not a European Commission concept. It's, it's a concept of industry, but it has now been brought into Horizon 2020. And we look at that in Module 2. Now the concept of TRL1, which is the basic principles are observed. So this is obviously the home territory of basic scientists. Whereas TRL9 means the product is ready to go on the market. So in this presentation, I'm going to use a computer mouse as an example of how, uh, you know, how TRL can explain the evolution of the computer mouse. So initially the concept, somebody had this concept that you could you move uh, an icon across the computer screen. Uh, the technology concept was formulated. Somebody tried to decide how out would be done. So this is TRL2. TRL3 is laboratory experimentation. And you expect, experiment with many, many dis different concepts. And you, you look at different concepts and you prove them. But TRL4 means it's working at laboratory level. So let's have a look at a TRL4 mouse. So here is the official photograph of the first mouse. You can see it's made of wood. It's probably very heavy. And probably if you moved it, the, an icon moved across the screen. So it was pretty fundamental. You couldn't sell this thing. And in 1984, I, I found this quotation that, uh, you know, one of the top uh, computer people in America said that, you know, they didn't think that this would have much of a future. Now, TRL5 is where you, the technology is validated in a relevant environment. So it's tested, but it's not part of the environment. TRL6, it means it's demonstrated in a relevant environment. Again, it's not part of the system, but it's being demonstrated. Now, here in TRL7, it's demonstrated, and the key word here is in an operational environment. So it goes into uh, a real system. Now, in TRL 8, this means the system is um, working and the, the new component is integrated into the system. So it's completed. And here you could be looking at meeting standards, meeting regulations, and so on. And in TRL 9, the product is on the market. So Logitech, which is one of the biggest producers of um, mouse, uh, mice, um, said in their website that they've shipped over 500 million mice and that only represents about half of all the mice shipped over, uh, over the last uh, 20 years. So it's an example of how uh, technologies evolve. Now, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, that whole uh, chain could be 20 years. Uh, if you look at the software industry, that chain could be 18 months. Uh, in energy, it might be seven, eight years. So from initial concept to having something on the market, um, it, it varies between uh, technologies, but so TRL1 to TRL9 is a way of expressing the, the, the level at which a technology is, is at any moment. Now, this slide shows more the more common terminology. We have basic research, laboratory research, um, technology research, technology demonstration. So those terms are sometimes used and it just puts them 
uh, in the position of the TRL table. Now, if we also look at the biotechnology sector and on the ERTO document, they discuss uh, this comparison. So you can see that phase one trials is about TRL 5, 6, phase two trials is TRL 7, and so on. Now, in Horizon 2020, they've adopted TRL as a way of expressing uh, the, the, where, prep, where a funding scheme is focusing. And what I've actually published is a, a general annex, and annex G of the general annex on the participant portal contains the definition of the TRL. And the, this is actually the definition I have used in the previous section of the uh, pr presentation in section one. Now, here's an example of a topic in call number one of Horizon 2020. So we can see here it's in MP1 2014. And we can see here that the implementation of the, of the proposed is intended to, to start at TRL4 and target TRL6. So it means that the funding is focusing on projects that operate in this area. So it's not funding basic science, it's not funding close to the market, and it's telling the scientists, look, we're looking at technologies that have been developed in the laboratory, we want to focus on demonstration, prototyping, and so on. Whereas if you look at another program, the, the transport program under aviation, and we can see the CSER uh, joint undertaking is focusing on TRL from one to six. That means in the aeronautics part of the program, they're going from basic research, basic concepts, right up to demonstration and, 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 and prototyping and so on. So, so that, that's how you see TRL appearing. And TRL is mainly mentioned in pillar two, which is industry leadership. Now in pillar three, which is societal challenges, they don't mention TRL too often, but you have to use your, the same concepts when you're, you're explaining at what level your project is focusing. Now let's look at uh, this, this diagram again. This uh, zone, let's call it, these TRLs are referred to as the value of debt. Now academic researchers don't like TRL 5, 6 and 7, basically because there's no publications in here. Industry doesn't like 5, 6 and 7 because it's very expensive and it's very, very risky. Now, Framework 7, the previous European program, came to about TRL 4, but Horizon 2020 is going to TRL 7. So that's why Horizon 2020 is called the Research and Innovation Program. Now, there's a problem with uh, funding schemes. When national and European uh, bodies are designing funding programs, they have to take into account what are called European competition law and international state aid rules. Basically, what this says is that the Irish government cannot fund a company to make it more competitive than a German company or an American company. So these are very, very strict rules. So when funding bodies are designing their programs, they're restricted by competition law and state aid rules to focus on approximately up to uh, T TRL7. So that's why Horizon 2020 is called a pre-competitive research program. So let's look at the um, let's look at the different programs in Horizon 2020 and see where they're actually located. Now, national funding goes from TRL one, funding basic science, up to demonstration and prototyping, and programs like Eurostars, which is for research-intensive companies bringing things closer closer to the market. That's about TRL, uh, you know, four, five, and six. ERC funds frontier or basic research, and that's roughly TRL1 going into TRL2. FED, Future and Emerging Technologies, is roughly TRL2. Now, Pillar 2 and Pillar 3 stretch from um, TRL2 up to, up to about the end of TRL6. Now, public-private partnerships, this is where European, national, and private funding is put on the table. Now, when you have private funding put on the table, that means you, you can go further than the competition law says because industry is putting money on the table. But you can see the public-private partnerships are, are focusing on TRL 5 plus. Marie Curie Fellowships, they fund, you know, postdoctoral research, but they all fund, so fund things like industrial PhDs, the RISE program for staff exchange between academia and industry. So some of the Marie Curie programs are focusing on the development of skills for people uh, dealing with industry. 
EIT, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, is trying to position itself across the valley of debt. And accessing finance is about funding high growth companies uh, at TRL 6 plus. It's also used for other applications, but in, in, in the case of enterprises, it's, it's for funding this part of the program. So you can see here how all the different programs and how they're related. Now, as you go towards TRL 1, the main evaluation criteria becomes excellence, scientific excellence. As you move in the direction of TRL 4, 5, 6, the main evaluation criteria becomes impact. So if you're at TRL, say, 2 to 4, then you have to consider both excellence and impact. Now, the different grants in Horizon 2020 address different parts of the TRL chain. The ERC grants, of course, are funding the ERC program. Now, research and innovation actions, these grants, cover from about TRL 2 to about the end of TRL 4 or early TRL 5. Innovation actions are focusing on demonstration, prototyping, living labs, and they normally cover about TRL 5, 6, and 7. The SME instrument uh, is mainly TRL 5 plus, so it's looking at bringing technologies closer and closer to the market. And the new type of grant, Fast Track to Innovation, is also focusing on TRL 5 plus. Uh, the public procurement, this is where public bodies demand innovation or research, that's actually getting closer uh, to, to the market. Now, coordination and support actions, these fund studies, they fund networks, and they've covered the full range of uh, TRL 1 to TRL 9, but it's mainly studies dealing with uh, these particular areas. Now, let's see how TRL can be used uh, when you're selecting partners for your project. Now, universities and research centres, public research centres, normally operate in the range of TRL 1 to TRL 4. Some of the research centres like Max Planck in, in Germany, they would be operating at TRL 1 and 2. A lot of universities, you know, might be more basic uh, research, which would be TRL 1 and 2, where some research centres would be at TRL 3 and 4. But generally, the public research centres are in this range. Research and technology organisations uh, operate from about TRL 4, you know, up to TRL 7. And again, this is where IARTO, the European Association of Research and Technology Organization, uh, tries to operate. So it's getting closer to the market. So it's working with universities and research centers, but doing things that are more relevant to the needs of industry. Research intensive companies. Now, these could be big companies, very large companies that have research departments, or they could be spin off companies from research centers where you know, highly qualified researchers set up their own company, they can bring results, you know, from TRL 5 onwards. Whereas high-tech companies, these are companies that like to have technologies verified, demonstrated, piloted, and again, they are normally operate maybe TRL 7 to 8. So when you're selecting your partners, you can see that for, you know, TRL 1 and 2, ERC and FET, it's more suited to universities whereas TRL 4, 5, 6 is more suitable to the research and technology organizations. Now, impact. Impact is, is asking the question, what is coming out of your project and who will use those results? Now, if you're looking at an ERC project, now this is fundamental research. So if that's operating at TRL 1, then the, the people that are interested in those results is the scientific community. So if you look at the evaluation of ERC, they talk about what is the research impact of, of, of the results. Now, if you're operating in a research and innovation grant, which is operating TRL 2 to TRL 5, then obviously the people that are interested in these results are people operating at about TRL 6. And in that case, it would be the research and technology organizations and research intensive companies. However, if you're looking at things like innovation actions, which is at TRL 5 and 6, then the, the, the organizations interested in these results would be high technology companies, standards organizations, and regulatory bodies. Now, if you're looking at an SME instrument, then you're getting really close to the market. And the lead users here would be the early adopters of new products, new services, 
and, and, and business models. So when we look at the impact part of the proposal, you will see how we're going to use the TRL table. And I, I, I think what we've shown in this presentation is this TRL, TRL, the concept of TRL is a very useful way of describing the programs, describing the grants, describing the role of the different partners and describing the impact. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And again, you can look at this website. Uh, it's an open website and you can find all the links uh, that I described in the presentation. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in, the next, in, the, in the next modules. Bye for now.